The scripture reading is taken from Psalms 23, verse 1 to 6. Verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy start, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Sixth and last, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good morning. Shall we bless the Lord? Come on, you can't do better than that. Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. Can't sing it enough, but a song is in my spirit. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. To know just what to do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. To know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, Lord. And I will. good God. So this morning my topic is praying effectively to the good shepherd. But in order to pray effectively to a good shepherd, you have to know who a good shepherd is. So the good shepherd I'm talking about this morning is the one who lays down his life for his sheep. No other than the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. To me, that means the Lord is my provider. All my needs shall be met. The Lord is my caretaker. I am provided for. The Lord is my shepherd. So when the economy fail, I will not be shaken because God is my source. In Jesus' name. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. God is a good God, you know. God makes everything beautiful and flourishing. He calms our spirits and he gives us peace. He gives us rest. How I know this? Two days ago, I was laying down and 
everything came back flashing to me, all the pressures of life, everything. And I literally felt like my heart was going to stop. And God said, Tracy, I'm arresting me. I miss arresting me, God, if my heart hurt me and sleep, me like a dead man. And I hear him say again, arresting me. And I went to lay down. And in about 15 minutes time, I got up. And there was no heart pain. None at all. And I wake up and I wonder. And then I hear my phone ring. And one of my friends called me. And she said, Tracy, and three of us was just in prayer for you. And I said, thank you, Jesus. That even when my heart is about to stop and I couldn't even say, God help me. He had persons in place praying for me. Not one, two, but three prayer warriors and up until this day my heart is not hurting anymore so I know that when you rest in God there is perfect peace he leads us to a place of rest and confidence to let us know that we can put every situation in him because he's able to solve them he restored my soul he led me in the paths of righteousness that means say, uh, whatever you lost, say if you have ever lost anything in life, you can give thanks this morning because he's our restorer. So he gives us joy for morning. Because you see look nice this morning and bright. Yeah, man, healing is my bread. Because I am God child. <laughs> Amen. He also gives us beauty for ashes. He will guide our steps to ensure that we are always on the right path. He teaches us to walk side by side with him so we can be committed for him to lead us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Mighty God. This means no matter what circumstances you are dealing with, it could be stress, it could be the bills, it could be the children, it could be a divorce, it could be abuse, it could be depression. Do not fear. It's called a shadow for a reason. It will only cover you for a period of time. Just stay in God's presence and it will not kill you. We have the authority and the resurrection power to decree and declare that we are the head and not the tail. We shall live and not die. Our current circumstances does not define us. We are coming out because we are more than overcomers to Christ which love us in the name of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit will always comfort us. So no care what you're facing in life, you always need the, com the Holy Spirit because he's the comforter. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. God will honor you in front of the same persons that try to tear you down. So don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about what, how they feel about you. As long as you know you stand in God, you are good. Even though you may feel surrounded or overwhelmed by your enemies, rest assured that God has already prepared a way for you. The battle has already been won. We are already victorious. He will anoint us from the very crown of our head to the sole of our feet. He will perfect our life so we'll always have blessings flowing in abundance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God will prosper you. And he will give you a very good life. He will also give you good health. He will all, we must always be grateful. We must always have a grateful heart. And always be consistent in our praise and worship to God. Because he will always lead you in a safe place and gives you peace of mind. Amen. So I'm giving you six points to remember. Seven. When you pray effectively to the good shepherd, 
your needs will always be met. He will never leave you. He will always make your life easier. You can always rest in him. You do not have to live in fear. Your enemies will always become your footstool. You will always walk in the overflow. Last but not least, goodness and mercy will always follow you. Not some days, not some months, but all the days of your life. God bless you all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My scripture is a bit different, so I'm going to read it. It's taken from St. John 10, verse 6 to 11. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Okay, good morning once again. I was asked to speak on the Good Shepherd, which is one of the promises of God. And as we know, God's promises are yes and amen. But before we go any further, we must know who a shepherd is. Well, since I love the Hebrew language, even though I'm not able to speak it, I searched up what shepherd meant in Hebrew. It says the Hebrew word ra, spelled R-A-A-H, meaning shepherd, describes one who tends, leads, feeds, and protects his flock of sheep. From my perspective, that seems to be a 24-7 job. So it means this person who is a shepherd would have to be one that shows great leadership. That person has to be very strategic in knowing where his flock can be taken and where his flock cannot be taken. This person must first have a heart ready for service and must be able to nurture their flock. While I was looking up how to pronounce the word Ra, it said Jehovah Ra, which translates as friend or companion. And in my mind, I was saying to myself, a shepherd and the good shepherd are two different things because a shepherd takes care of their flock of sheep, but the good shepherd takes care of any sheep that is burdened or weary. The good shepherd runs after his sheep when they are lost, and most importantly, the good shepherd never gets tired or annoyed at his sheep. The good shepherd is completely devoted to his job and shows 100% commitment. Right about now, many of you are asking yourself, who is that good shepherd? And as Sister Tracy said, the good shepherd is our Savior, Jesus Christ. I would like to read St. John 10, verse 1 to 5, because I feel that there is something that needs to be said about those verses. So it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. And then Jesus explains to the people that he is the door of the sheep. So everyone else that came before Jesus were all thieves and robbers because they weren't the door. They weren't Jesus. And then from there, Jesus said the sheep did not hear them, obviously because the shepherd and the sheep have a close relationship. So the sheep knows instantaneously when the shepherd is speaking. The sheep knows exactly how the shepherd nurtures them because the sheep and the shepherd's relationship is almost like a father-to-child relationship. The shepherd will be able to call out the names of the sheep and they will follow him. 
The shepherd has the ability to lead his flock of sheep without any being resistant. Everyone that enters through Jesus shall be saved. But not only is he saved, he will go in and out and around and about, and he shall find pasture. A pasture is a land covered with grass and other low plants suitable for grazing animals, especially cattle or sheep. When I think of this, I think of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. The good shepherd gives us rest and refreshes us. He gives us peace that passeth all understanding. And he gives us inner peace that we need to overcome every fear and every situation. The thief referred to in St. John has no power like Jesus because Jesus is all powerful. The, theme came, the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy, but God came that we might have life and have life more abundantly. God cares about us, but the devil will set you up for failure, and when you have failed, he will laugh at you. That means that once we as a sheep enter through the door, Jesus invades our life. He comes in and overcomes the sin that we have in our heart. He overcomes the pain, the suffering, the unhappiness, the doubts, and the fear. He changes you and he renews you. I truly believe that my God is the G-O-A-G-S, God of all gods, because he always has the final say. So he closes by telling the Pharisees that he is the good shepherd, and a good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. The good shepherd would sacrifice anything to see his flock of sheep succeed. Jesus is the good shepherd, not the good sheep herder. Shepherd comes from the old English, sea of herder, which means sheep herder. The difference between a shepherd and a sheep herder is that sheep herders drive large group of sheep from behind the flock, while a shepherd leads a manageable number of sheep from the front of the flock. The good shepherd is an example to us all. He's even a greater example to those who lead in the ministry. God really desires to raise up a set of leaders in this church, but we must be open to how God leads us. And the truth is, it starts with those in leadership. As leaders, you must lead and tend to God people. Because from your leadership comes the next generation of leaders, comes the next set of pastors. As I close, I just want to remind you that Jesus is the good shepherd. He loves us, he cares for us, and he laid down his life for us. Whether we lead a congregation or not, once we made the good shepherd the leader of our lives, we will never be the same. And now I'm going to call on Sister Antoinette to come and minister through a song that is entitled Never Be the Same. And while she sings this song, if you are right there and you don't want to keep on being the same, you want the Good Shepherd to come and invade your life and change your life. You want him to guide you along every step of the way. And if I'm speaking to you, I'm going to invite you to the altar. And as Brother Garnett always says, the altar is not for sinners. So maybe you need a revival, not just for you, but for your family. Maybe you want to go deeper in your relationship with God. But whatever it is, you can come to the altar, laying it all down at Jesus' feet, because he cares. And after Sister Antoinette finishing the song, I'm going to ask Minister Renee to pray for you all. <laughs> same I've touched your grace my life has changed I will never be the same I touch your grace my life one more time I will never I will never be the same I touch your grace my life has I will I will never be the same I touch your grace I 
Once you are flood, I just want to touch the M of your I garment, God. And I will never be the same, God. I will never. 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 If you're sitting down and you want just a taste, just a taste and see, the altar is open. The altar is open. You will never be the same. You will never be the same. I'm a living testimony. I'm a living testimony. I'm a testimony. You will never be the same. You will never be the same. You will never be the same. You will never be the same.
Thank you. 